from this earth to no promise stirring in your sons and daughters earth revealing heaven's wonders spirit come spirit come What you spoke is now unfolding And all your children shall be holding Dreams awaken in this moment Spirit come, Spirit come Oh now, let your love run To glory fill this house for now. Let your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house. The world awaits your presence. And this power is within us. We will rise to be your image. Spirit come, Spirit come. For me now, let your love run over. Here and now, let your glory fill this house. Open out, let your love run over. Here and now, let your glory fill this house. Tongues of fire, testifying of the sun. One desire, spirit cup. Spirit come, speak revival. Prophesy like it is done. One desire. Spirit come, spirit come. Tongues of fire. Testify against the sun. One desire. Spirit come, spirit come. Speak revival. Greetings. I'm Kathy Ingridson, a retired and interim pastor and a member of the World Hunger Subcommittee of the La Crosse Area Synod. Welcome to worship for a season of thanks. The service is a gift to the congregations of this synod from our subcommittee. You may be worshiping for Thanksgiving or some other time in the harvest or hunting season. We're gathering mostly in our homes for worship these days, so I'm starting things off at our dining table here in Onalaska. My husband Tom and I were married in November, many years ago, and we gathered often at this table at his parents' home with lots of family and friends, holidays, and just for regular meals. And this table came to our home when we moved here. Relationships grew and lives were blessed around this table, along with bodies being filled with good food. 
It's a simple round table in our home, but there it was usually extended to its full size to accommodate the group. Throughout Holy Scripture, the Lord is always setting tables. Jesus is celebrating and teaching at banquets. Hungry people are being fed. Our God is a God of abundance to be shared with all. Even though we're in the struggle with COVID-19, and that might limit the size of your celebrations this year, it's our prayer that it will not limit your joy or your sense of gratitude. As you worship, you'll be traveling virtually around the Synod to each conference and even beyond to an internship site in Nebraska with one of our seminarians. May this time of worship be a blessing to you. We begin with the words of a beautiful hymn of this season. Sing to the Lord of harvest, sing songs of love and praise. With joyful hearts and voices, your alleluia's raise. By him the rolling seasons in fruitful order move. Sing to the Lord of harvest, a joyous song of love. Come, let us worship. This 
I'm Emma Grindy, member at Emmanuel in Viroqua. I'm also a seminarian through Wartburg Theological Seminary, and currently I'm on internship serving at the Lutheran Center at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. The Gospel According to Luke When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away, so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. And he said to the disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about fifty each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed them and broke them and gave them to, to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up, twelve baskets of broken pieces. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello, here we are at the food shelf of Trinity Lutheran Church on the north side of La Crosse. It's a good place to go when we're talking about Thanksgiving and hunger. When I get to the food shelves, I'm always thankful that we have so many people who have enough to share. And they have enough to share of stuff that's wanted. In the olden days when I served a church that had a food shelf, I would regularly be given things to take home because they knew I had a wide taste and they were pretty sure the clients of the food shelf weren't looking for artichoke carts. They weren't looking for 60% uh, cocoa chocolates. They weren't looking for coconut milk. They weren't looking for spicy cauliflower pickled relish. But the church staff knew I had strange tastes. In those days it was easy to address a food drive with what do I have on this shelf that I picked up for an exotic recipe, didn't use it all, and probably won't never use it again. Or what do I have in my pantry that is so dusty, I really don't want to open it. Those were the things we didn't need to send. Those were the things that were just a slough off. But hunger's gotten more real in our world, both locally and abroad. Hunger's real enough that we talk about it and we think about what we give. We share from the part of our pantry that holds cans and boxes of things that we use, that we know people can make a difference with. Boxes that have recipes already on them and cans that contain a whole meal in a can, beef stew, chili, soups, making it easy to prepare, nutritious to receive, and a gift to those in need. Today's gospel is an interesting story. Jesus has been preaching all day. 
And in that preaching, he has looked out over the space in front of him and seen a mass gather that's 5,000 men plus women and children. They've been with him all day and he's had so much to share. And they've been fascinated. They haven't left. And so it's time for the evening meal. Jesus' disciples go up to him and say, look at all these hungry people, Jesus. We are going to send them into town to find some rest and some food, right? We can't feed them, can we? And Jesus looks at them and says, thanks for noticing. You give them something to eat. There's a cartoon that always makes me nervous. Two frames. The first frame shows the person on his knees, but looking out at the reader saying, I'm always reluctant to ask Jesus to feed the hungry. And the second frame, because I'm always afraid he might ask me to do the same. We're the body of Christ. We know Jesus who has claimed us and loves us and leads us. Like the disciples, we know that he's the center of our passion. He's the center of our giving. He's the center of reaching out to need. And we go to Jesus like those disciples and say, what are we going to do? Last year's statistics had 600 million hungry people in the world. 600 million. And then COVID-19 hit. The estimates are that by the end of this year, there will be an additional 110 million hungry people in our world. 710 million. And we go to Jesus and say, Jesus, what are we going to do with these hungry people? And Jesus says, you've been blessed, you've received, you have, you. Give them something to eat. That's the challenge for us. Do we see ourselves as blessed? Do we know that we've been claimed forever in love by the grace of God? Do we know that we've been made the body of Christ on earth? The feet, the arms, the embrace, the outreach of Jesus into the world. Can we say thank you? Can we gather in our smaller meals this year with fewer people around the table and still be thankful? and still notice the bounty we have. Say, thank you, Jesus, for the bounty, the blessings. We are thankful. And Jesus, show us how to give them something to eat. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings. Thank you, Jesus, for the challenge. We will feed your hungry. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ. God's only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 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 He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. The resurrection. The resurrection. And the life. And life everlasting. Amen. I'm Tim Byam, member of Hardy's Creek Lutheran Church in Rural Ettrick, and also a member of the La Crosse Area Synod Subcommittee for World Hunger. And we're going to talk a little bit today about some of our world hunger projects that we've done over the years. I got involved with the World Hunger Committee several years ago, and part of it was I was frustrated with the fact that there are hungry people in the world. I'm a dairy farmer, and there's an abundance of food everywhere, and people should be able to eat. 
So when we started on that committee, we realized that our synod was one of the lowest contributors to world hunger in all of the ELCA. So we made it one of our goals to improve that. And we wanted to raise it to approximately $5 per baptized member contributions each year to world hunger. Well, there was an idea, and kind of like um, Jesus, born in a barn 2,000 years ago, this idea was born in a barn. We came up with this idea for these cutout cows. And the idea was that each congregation would get a cow cut out with the hopes of raising $500 for world hunger. Well, for whatever reason, it took off, and we raised somewhere in the neighborhood of $175,000 in our synod, which was pretty amazing. The next two years later, we decided we we're going to do the sheep project. And so you see the sheep on each side, and we did the same thing. Our men's club here at Hardy's Creek cut out the sheep, they cut out the cows, and they were distributed throughout the synod. And we raised a similar amount of money for that project. Well, then this past year, we decided, what are we going to do next? So our committee came up with this idea of doing the family farm project with a barn and some things that it symbolizes. But this time, we wanted to raise $715. And I'll grab my note here, or brochure. And so. Each congregation was asked and given a barn to raise $715. And that $715 represents two goats, a cow. Actually, we've got two cows on here. A dozen chickens. You can see the chickens. And then a couple pigs. And along with some seed. we got seed on the bottom. And then there's also agricultural training to go along with that. So each barn represented $715. Here at Hardy's Creek, we decided we were going to use our silo as a gauge as to how much money we'd raised. So as you can see, we filled one silo. And then we decided, well, every good farmer needs another silo. So we added another silo. And so actually, we're on our third one right now. And that's kind of been our focus for this year. And by next year, hopefully we'll have a Senate assembly again. And then these barns will be brought there and uh, to represent what each congregation has done. So that's kind of the, the gist, I guess, of uh, the farmly, family farm project. And really our goal through all of this and for the ALCA is we want to make sure everybody in the world is fed. And that's kind of been our theme, until all are fed. I could give you a lot of different numbers uh, as to how many hungry people there are. And we've made some progress. Our goal was, hopefully, to eliminate hunger by 2030. I don't know if we'll make it, but we're working at it. Thanks to contributions from all of our churches, lots of individuals, and you know, to each of you that contribute. So our goal really is to make this number zero. And with your help, we hope we can do that. 500 years ago, Martin Luther said, everything in the world begins with hope. And so that's our hope, to eliminate hunger. So with that, I'd like to thank you. Any contributions can be made through your church or to the ELCA World Hunger Appeal. So. Welcome again to Hardy's Creek Lutheran Church. Uh, we have 158 years of history here. And one of the big things we do is world hunger emphasis. And for years and years, that's been an important part of our congregation and the life here. And probably 25 years ago at least, 
one of our members, Norma Conrad, came up with this idea of an old milk pipeline and put pennies in it to raise funds for world hunger. She talked to Stan Halter, who was our local dairy equipment dealer, and together they got this glass pipeline. And the kids come up here. We like to start them early so that they get this idea of helping people that are hungry. And they put pennies, any kind of change, quarters, dimes, all the way, and they slide to the bottom and make a little noise. And it helps everybody remind, or reminds everybody of the hungry people in the world and what we can do to help. When we get this full, depending on how many quarters and pennies and nickels and dimes are in there, we get somewhere between $125 and $150 when this is full. So that's just one more thing we do it here at Hardy's Creek to help feed the hungry people in the world. I'd like to thank Tim Byam for coming over today and telling a little bit about the hunger projects that our hunger subcommittee has been working on and all of us as a synod have been working on for the past six years or so. This is the time of Thanksgiving and so we remember that God has blessed us with so much. We, rem we remember how in the small catechism Martin Luther said that God provides us with everything we need for this life. Food and clothing, home and family, peace and health and good government, and all the things that we have been blessed with in our lives. I love what it says in Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Even in the midst of the pandemic, when life seems so challenging and difficult, we still continue to give thanks to God for all the blessings we have received in this life. And in return, out of gratitude for all that God has done for us, we in turn give back to help others here and around the world. I want to close with this. In the words of a German mystic named Meister Eckhart, he once said, if the only prayer you ever said in your life is thank you, that would be enough. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you in the La Crosse Area Synod and beyond.
let us pray together as our Lord has taught us praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 and the final verse of that beautiful Thanksgiving hymn. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body, and be thankful. Bring to God's sacred altar the gifts God's goodness gave, the golden sheaves of harvest, the souls Christ died to save. Your hearts lay down before him when at his feet you fall and with your lives adore him, who gave his life for all. May this season of thankfulness, 
though different from years past, bring you peace and love and abundance from our gracious God of abundant love and life. Amen.